Okay, I just got finished assembling my Oklahoma Joe reverse flow smoker. I had been noticing this particular smoker in um, BJ's for I think the last, I think it was last year I know, seen it in there and saw it in there again this year. I was just determined to get me one. <clears throat> it just so happened that I lucked up and today they had them only for 200 bucks and so I said okay I gotta bounce on it while I can and I want to give a special thanks to my family everybody who contributed to my birthday wish and uh, contributed towards this smoker so thank you everyone who was able to make a small donation and whatever you was able to give thanks got it so what I like about this first of all it's a reverse flow smoker which I always wanted a small size reverse flow, reverse flow smoker for the backyard. It comes with a charcoal basket. Now I don't think this thing is going to last me for too long, maybe a couple of years, but I'm going to end up having to get a heavy duty one built. And of course, we got some grates going here. Um, for some grilling. Got a nice little shelf with it too, which is handy. Wood rack shelf down there. So Chad, I'll be hitting you up for some wood for this thing. And <clears throat> another feature that I like for not only is it reverse flow, but it gave you the uh, tuning plates to go with it. So here you got your powerful plates. And each one is separate. So if you decide to go, um, you have the option to go direct flow. You can, you can, there's a little bolt, you see it on that side, that you can uh, loosen the exhaust, bring it to the side to make it direct flow. And in that case, you can just simply lift the plates up. And just slide them like such to tune it to get you an even cooking um, within your chamber. And of course, you just go ahead and when you decide to go back to reverse flow, reassemble. They got these little hooks. Not sure if you can see it in there. No, you can't see it. But some little hooks, just hook them back together. And basically, the way it works, the heat comes in. This deflects the heat down. Flex, flex the heat's down. The heat flows underneath the bottom of the plate. Comes up here, over the heat, over. I'm sorry, over the surface of your food, and then out of the exhaust, which is right there. So it kind of gives you a convection type heating, um, cooking with your uh, meat, which I like. So um, I'm gonna do a burn in, I guess before I go in tonight, just to burn off some of the manufacturer's oil that's on it. And um, yeah, I've been wanting one of these for quite a while. Finally got one, brought past the Johnny Young, got one also. And so I'm sure me and him will be going back and forth on uh, learning tips and tricks and techniques and things that we've learned on this on our Oklahoma Joe all right well y'all have a great day happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there hope you have a great day <laughs> and if you I guess uh, I saw a little mean why is it on Mother's Day it's take me out to eat on Father's Day why don't you go and grill something so I'll be grilling tomorrow for Father's Day you guys have a great one Okay, so I'm getting an Oklahoma Joe reverse flow smoker ready for its maiden cook. Burned it in last night. It ran about 350 for a little while. It was getting dark, so I didn't stay out the whole time and watch it. But um, when I last left it, it was running about 
350 and I let it do what it do for all night long uh, not all night long eventually burnt down but anyway you get what I'm talking about those of you that cook I just let it run burn in and get rid of some of the manufacturer's oil and I just seasoned it up and just let the fire doing some honey ham ribs today and some ranch smoked ribs I mean ranch smoked wings I'm sorry so uh, as you can see it got some smoke coming out through the cooking chamber and around the fire uh, chamber fire box I'm not too pressed about that um, it's going to do what it does. I'm going to see how this bad boy does today. I'm going to take a lesson from one of my barbecue senseis and keep her clean the first go around. Oh, I do want to mention this. I don't like... Uh, I don't like this. Um, last night I wanted to adjusted to about halfway and it kept closing all the way and so uh, I eventually had to stick a rock or something on the inside to keep it from um and now okay it looked like some kind of plastic or something melts it down now I can't close it at all I'm gonna wait to see if it heats up if I can close it but I don't like that I don't I don't like not having the ability to uh adjust the damper because it's either going to be that or close so I might have to stick a rock or something on the inside of it to keep the um, damper adjusted to where I want it at so that's the only drawback to it thus far um, other than that I'll keep you posted as to how this particular cook goes alright y'all stay tuned Okay, I got the ribs. I'm about to, those are gonna be the honey ham ribs and the ranch chicken. Currently got this at 350. We're gonna damper it down, try to get it down to 200. I mean, um, 300. I'm going to put it on for now. That there. I'm gonna get my Maverick and put it on. I want to see if my temperature is running from this end to that end at the grate. Get my wood, two chunks of hickory, chunk of cherry. Go ahead and put that in the firebox. Okay, now you can, as you can see that, hopefully you can see that, that done close, and even with a eighth of a gap there, it's running at 300. So I'm going to close the damper down to about there, and we'll see what that gives us. But it, I'm wondering what that stuff is. Look like something melted. I don't know, some kind of plastic or what. Looks like it melted. All right. All right. Gonna let it do what it do. I put the cold meat on. So it's at uh, 250, 275. It's about two. 80 now, 290. Alright, I'll keep you posted how the maiden cook go. Let me go get the Maverick and put that on. Alright, little John, take care, man. Doing a video? Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, no problem. Well, this one, I can. This one's just gonna go on Facebook. It's not for YouTube. Okay. Alright. Okay, it's been a little over an hour. So that's the front and that's the back. So there's about a 22 degrees difference right now between the two. So let's see how our meats are looking and 
on this one is still the ambient temperature is about 290 okay okay that's what our ribs are looking like and that's our chicken let me get me some tongs and flip that flip that chicken over get that a chance to crisp up but um, that's what we're looking at it's going to take a while for them ribs to go but you know I just want to give you a shot of what we're looking like and these are some smoked ranch chicken and this is going to be our honey ham ribs looking good all right stay tuned the Oklahoma Joe doing what it's doing trial I made him voyage all right it's been about 50 minutes since we've last been out here I did have to add a little bit more charcoal to the box and so it's 279 at the front 300 at the rear let's see what we're working with all right I went on a few those on the grate the chicken looks good I have flipped it over let's go ahead and probe it make sure they're done and they are okay chicken's done so go ahead and pull that all right i'll check check these rib tips see where they at okay all right that one done really got crispy right here all right so let me see my ribs at just gonna okay all right i'm gonna let the ribs go a little the tips are just about done and get them off and chop them up and the ribs are, and the chicken is done so pour those off stay tuned Okay, that's the ribs outside of the foil. That's the glaze. It's gonna, it's kind of loose. So I think next time I do this, I'm gonna thicken it up. I'm gonna just go ahead. Maybe I just go ahead and pour it on. Cause it's real loose. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Oh, wow. Nice. Again, let me just pour some on. I'm sorry, it's out of frame. Alright, I'm going to let these sit for five minutes, and they're going to be done. <laughs> 